Well, good day to all you Waverly Roaders and to anybody else who may have accidentally discovered our Bible lesson. Uh, you know, sometimes I think as we uh, put these lessons together, we wonder what the value of them may be to people who tune in. We don't really know who tunes in, but we do know the number of clicks. Uh, but, you know, as, as we think about that, I'm reminded of the passage in Matthew 18, where G Jesus says, where there are two or three gathered together in my name, I am there among you also. So uh, we've certainly got three here at the teachers. So uh, we need to be encouraged that Jesus is in our midst. Uh, we're starting a new study. We're using the present word again. And uh, this next quarter is going to be titled Faith That Pleases God. Uh, the entire uh, book is about faith. Uh, in December, we will be studying five profiles in faith, uh, characters in the Bible that uh, need to be discussed about their faith. In January, the title of the lessons are Learning About Faith. And then in February, The Righteous Live by Faith. The author of this uh, quarter's lesson is Reverend Robert Belliquette who is the transition pastor of Hanover Presbyterian Church in Hanover, Indiana. We used to call those interim pastors, but for some hmm. reason they've gone to transition pastor, uh, but it's the same thing. Uh, what is faith? I think we all have a pretty good notion of what faith means to each of us. I, I think it's a, a strong belief without any proof. Uh, when I think of faith, I think of that hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, O God, my Savior. Now, today's lesson is all about Ruth and Naomi. The Faith of Ruth is the title of the lesson. And uh, we'll get into that in just a few minutes, but let us open with prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are here today to study your word again. We are here today to worship you and to thank you and praise you for all the things that you do in our life. We are especially thankful for Jesus Christ and as you sent him to us to give us eternal life. As we go into this nati uh, nativity season and Christmas coming, let us be ever mindful of the importance of Christ in our lives. We pray for this church, Waverly Road, and its members. We lift up Bill Butler to you this morning, who is facing serious heart surgery, and any others who need your love and compassion. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, I believe that uh, Barbara is going to, or Betsy is going to read the scripture today. Yes. You know, I am really very sure that this passage from the book of Ruth is probably one of, if not the second best known scriptures in our Bible. I think probably the Lord's Prayer is number one, but I think that this passage from Ruth is definitely one that many, many people know. The scripture is Ruth 1, verses 6 through 18, and verse 22. Then Naomi started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, that she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. 
Then she kissed them and they wept aloud. They said to her, no, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, turn back my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back my daughters, go your way for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been for more bit, bit, it has been more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Oprah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, look at your sister-in-law. She's gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you, to turn back from following you. Whither you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord do thus to me and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So Naomi returned together with Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, who had came back with her from the country of Moab. They came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. Thank you, Betsy. That is a very familiar passage that I think we all recognize. Okay, Barbara, I believe it's your turn. Okay. The title of my section is Fidelity Toward Restoration. Those are two pretty big words. So what is fidelity? Faithfulness to a person, cause, or belief demonstrated in, by continual loyalty and support. And restoration is action of returning something to a former owner, place, or condition. The people of Ruth's story lived an unsettled existence. Naomi's situation brings to life the straits the widow faced in ancient Israel. She endured the loss of social status, but even worse, the complete loss of economic viability. With no recourse for help without Elimnik, who would have served as the head of her family. She went on the move as a matter of necessity, but continued to struggle to find stability. They faced fame and disease and potential hostility among the Moabites, who were considered the enemy. As I read this, this is what I was going by the author said, but in my mind, I thought Ruth and her husband and sons, I mean, the sons went with her. I guess that's right. I guess the husband had died. I'm sorry. In the face of calamity, Ruth chooses the unlikely path of profane fidelity and friendship toward the story, toward restora restoration and wholeness for entire people. Her statement, verses 16 and 17, but do not press me to leave you, to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do thus to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. So that's like Betsy said, that is a very familiar passage. It's not just a promise of loyalty, but a profound statement of identity change, an intentional shift of membership and belonging for Moab and his 
is stewardess to Israel and God. Recent studies place the writing of Ruth during or shortly after the Babylonian exile between 586 and 500 BCE. This presents the story of Ruth as a way of encouraging people to return home from the exile. According to the Jewish study Bible, the promised exiles who were encouraged to return home, was, they were promised a place of stability and abundance. Scripture names Ruth as the great-grandmother David. Therefore, she's the person whose story provides an essential, essential turn toward wholeness for an entire group of people. She does this even though she was an outsider. Being a mobile woman in that time frame, she would have been distrust, distrusted and reviled even by the people for whom she was so important in uh, like Ruth and her group, I mean Naomi. The author Ruth draws attention to both Naomi and Ruth as playing powerful roles in preserving a people despite their social status, through, though that means the challenges through special norms of the time. Ruth's courage and determination to hope for a good future is very different from Naomi's bitterness and grief for her past. This is because, this is because it's clearly rooted in her love for Naomi but it's also linked to a deliberate shift in faith in Israel's God. Jewish scholars Ranhart specifies the genealogy in the story of Ruth draws a direct line between Perez, who is the son of Tamar, through Obed, son of Ruth, to David. At the end of Ruth, and in the contrast with so much of the rest of the story, the author Ruth names her so far back in the background that she seems to vanish from the scene since the names of the male sons take up the, spare, the space in the final verses. This could speak to the tension of the author around a so-called bloodline for maintaining the national identity. He does this by identifying Naomi, an Israelite, as the nursing mother Obed instead of Ruth. In spite of the author's attempt to downplay the presence of a Moabite in the family tree of Jesus, it's ultimately Ruth's choice, her faithfulness, her re resourcefulness, and courage that delivers Naomi and the Israelite community into a new season. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Very interesting. Well, the book of Ruth is about much more than the relationship of a Moabite woman with an Israelite mother-in-law. Uh, basically, it is a story that tells us about God's relationship with those people who follow him. Uh, the author of our lesson calls this section, God's Fidelity Revealed. And in that statement, he lists eight scripture passages in the book of Ruth that tells who God really is. And I'll just run over those with us this morning. We don't have time to talk about them in detail. But the first one he mentioned is that God is omnipresent. What that means is God always was and always will be. He was here at the beginning. He will be here at the end. So he is omnipresent. God is a kindly God. For those who acknowledge him as God, he shows great kindness. He gives us the ability to rest. He rewards those who are faithful to him. He exalts women in this story. He gives life as the creator of all. He will never abandon you. Through the thick and thin, God is always there for you if you trust him. And then God blesses those who have a faithful relationship with him. Early and I were talking this morning, what does it really mean to be blessed by God? You know, I think that's probably in the mind of the beholder. But to me, to be blessed by God is to receive the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God. 
to know that if you look at Jesus Christ, that you have a place to go when you die, that your soul will be with God. And I think that's the greatest blessing you could ever achieve is to have eternal life with God. So uh, we now will ask Betsy about stepping into the world. No matter our religion, what it is, we can all find a message of hope, joy, and love in this passage. Even though Naomi, now calling herself Mara, which is translated to bitterness, is heavy with grief, the author clearly portrays a new beginning. Empathy doesn't erase pain. Ruth's courageous decision to be faithful to Naomi led them to experience joy and community. Perhaps we need a reminder from God, as Ruth demonstrated to Naomi, that not even death can separate us. Hope of the new season of Advent teaches in the mind, the midst of grief, that God is present, God is kind, and God stays with us always. Life in the new season is a life of faithfulness to God and each other. Beyond the hostilities that divide us, solutions to areas that separate us are bound to faithful relations and with people whose identity is very different from our own. Very good. Thank you, Betsy. Barbara, will you close us with prayer this morning? Here we are. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the story of Ruth, which is a story of love, devotion, and willingness to do whatever it took to care for someone she cared about. We often are tempted to give up and walk away when the going gets tough. Let us know that you are with us in good times and in bad times. Give us the strength to stop, listen, and take action when you tell us to. Please let us be restorers instead of destroyers. Thank you very much for all you have done for and are continue to do for us. You are awesome. In fact, you are the only thing that's awesome. You know the needs of each of us and others. Please meet the needs in the way you desire they be met, whether it is with your mighty hand of healing or something that we need to help someone with. And please give us the directions for us to follow you in the way you would have us to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. See you next Wednesday. Okay. Everybody have a good week. Same here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.